In my last video, I talked about the basics of GPIO and how to use it with ESP-IDF and briefly mentioned the interrupt handle. Today's video will dive deeper into the mechanics of interrupt handling and demonstrate it by adding a push button to our previous example which can control when our LED will light up. I will re-explain interrupt for a bit. We can define an interrupt callback function that will be called when a pin changes its signal value and what type of change will trigger the callback function. When an interrupt occurs, the main program will stop being executed. Then, the interrupt service routine, commonly known as ISR, is called. The processor then temporarily works on a different task, ISR, and returns to the main program after the handling routine ends. Here are some of API functions provided by the ESP-IDF framework for working with ISR. Please note that this video can't cover everything, so check the official API guide for more reference. Before we code, let's review our circuit. One end of the push button is connected to pin 33, and the other end is connected to ground. The LED is still connected to pin 32, like in the previous video. Note that all of the green wires are attached to ground. Let's implement our application. We are starting from scratch again. The Boolean variable LED state will be used to decide whether to light up our LED or not. Our task handle function is a while true loop, which will write a digital signal to our LED, whereas the interrupt handle function is there to change the LED state value when we press a button. The IRAM of the interrupt callback function indicates that this function should be loaded in the internal RAM of the ESP32, and this feature is commonly used with ISR. In the main function, we set the button GPIO to be the input, the LED pin as output, and enable a pull-up resistor for the button GPIO so the default state will be high. We set the interrupt type to raising edge, install the ISR service, and then add the corresponding handler. The code here is done. When we build and flash the code, nothing happens yet. When we press the button and move our hand away, the LED will light up. Press again and the LED is turned off. However, normally we would see people use cues with interrupts, and I'm gonna provide an example of this too. Q is one of kernel objects that assist in creating thread-safe communications between threads although there can be other options like mutexes and semaphores. Using queues is an efficient way to transport data between tasks and tasks or between interrupts and tasks in an RTOS environment. Queue follows the first in, first out principle. It has atomic read and write, which basically means that when we are writing or reading from a queue, this action cannot be interrupted, which prevents faulty data. For example, if task A is writing to a queue, Task B cannot read it before task A finishes, or else B would have processed garbage data. This is applied to our interrupt mechanics in the way that we can place messages on the queue and ensure that the ISR only get called when you are free and not let it interrupt our main program during critical moments when our main program is running. Note that in freer tos, information is copied into a queue by value and not by reference. That means if you use the execute send function, to send a piece of data to a queue, all of the data will be copied into the queue atomically. Here are the core API functions related to FreeART OS queue that will be introduced in the video. Send and receive are like on queue or DQ operations of the normal queue data structure. If you look up the official API, you can find other queue operations like peak or check if empty or full. We have to include the header file for queue first, then declare our queue and initialize it later in the app main function. Our infinite loop in the task handler function will check if it can receive an item from the queue. The sender is in the ISR handle where the LED state changes and its value is copied to the queue. Note that the function in our ISR handle must have the from ISR at the end. The output when we flash the code doesn't change but this serves as a demonstration of how we can use Q with interrupt.
And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in my future videos.